Good day. Uh, this is Mr. Orban again. So this is our ICT module A computing fundamentals lesson number five, software. So today uh, our lesson is just a short lesson. So we'll start uh, sharing our screen. Okay, software. So our topics are to describe the benefits of the software, install, uninstall, prepare, and update apps and applications, set software preferences, work with Windows apps, and use messaging applications. Messaging. Uh, why do we use software? Of course, software makes our computing devices useful. So we have a device. Of course, we need to use our software. Uh, to do a particular task, okay? So without a software, uh, we cannot do this task. Okay, software and apps keep, keep us productive and empowered. Locally installed software is installed on a device and runs directly on that device. So there are two types, locally installed, local apps, local software, local applications. Okay, it's on your computer, whatever, wherever, what computer you're using right now. Now, the cloud-based software runs on a dedicated server and is designed to be accessed over the internet. So the cloud-based software are used or will use uh, or needs the use of a web browser. So Google Chrome, Microsoft Edge, Safari, and so on. Okay, so you need to open that and usually you need a login account. So an example of that is our OneDrive. Okay, so we we'll go to our office.com. You sign in here. Okay, and then you need a username and a password. So if he already recognized that this is my uh, username. Now I'm keying my password. So we like in inside. And these are the different applications that you can use on your office.com or your cloud-based software. So I can even use Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. Uh, but just a reminder, this has um, a lot of differences, okay, with regards to local applications. Of course, the best application to use is the local application because all the features can be accessed there. If you're going to use a web base here, you open any Word, uh, Excel, PowerPoint, or any application, it's not um, complete, okay, in features. So anyway, let's proceed. Uh, how do we obtain software? You have many options for obtaining and installing software. When you say obtain, buying or getting in the software, okay? Uh, when you purchase, buying a software, when you purchase a software program, you are purchasing a license to install and use that program on your device. Sample, you buy an antivirus to your computer. Where, you, where are you going to buy that? It's either you go to uh, an electronic shop, they will give you a card. That's actually the code for your license. Uh, if you purchase it online, for example, you could just go to the web browser, uh, to the internet and look for that software you purchase, then you have to buy from there. And then automatically it will email you for a code or you, it will generate a code and so on. The cost of software often includes future updates to the program, of course. So for example, you bought uh, an antivirus for one year, good for one year. So the updates to that, all the features will be available to you within one year. System requirements is very important. What's this uh, uh, idea? The idea is that whenever you want to install a software, you must know first the, re the requirements of that software, okay? So for example, uh, it needs at least a uh, 1.6 gigahertz uh, processor. It needs at least, let's say, 10 GB of storage, something like this. Okay, so you will need to go to your system properties 
and where you're going to go that uh, where are you going to see that you can go to your system i don't know uh sorry um settings okay, settings up and then click on the system okay uh And I told you from the beginning, I am a control panel man. So go to the control panel and you go to system security. Okay, system security. Yeah, view amount of RAM and processor speed. So this is your settings. You can see I have a RAM of 16 GB, a processor of at least Intel i7, 2.9 gigahertz. And so on. So from here, when you select a software, I'm using. Uh, you can, uh, you know already what are the requirements. You are using Windows. You have this kind of processor. You have uh, how big is your system, how your your storage, and so on. So same with your uh, applications in your mobile phone. Okay, but that's given. If you are in your Apple Store, for sure it is capable of uh, installing applications from Apple Store, except that if you are memory or your storage device is full already, okay? So let's proceed. Okay, you can install, configure, repair, and install and reinstall software. As required, a software license permits you to make a backup copy of the original installation program. So, when you're buying a license of course uh it allows you to you know use the software okay uh you can have the software actually you can download the software but running it is different because it needs a license okay so that means the other features will not yet be given to you okay if you do not have the license so let's proceed Installing a new program. Most software program use installation was wizard. So Excel. So let me go to my downloads. Uh, most likely I have an Excel here. Yeah. So these are installers. You click that one. Let's see what I can try here. Mm, let's say it's Cisco WebEx. I don't know. Zoom. But I have a Zoom on my ah, Reaper. Okay, let's try this. Okay, you can see it will enter first with a license agreement. You agree, and then you can start. So this is the wizard. I will not go through with this. Uh, you just need to click next, next, next. So it when you say wizard, it has a guide on how you install it. So let's, yes. so let's proceed. Account control when you want to install Windows will ask you do you want to allow this app to make changes to your PC because most likely it's just a verification that any exe file exe is an installer or the installer that your uh, that you have seen earlier here you can see it's an exe exe means executable file you click that uh, your Windows must ask is this a safe uh, what they call it is it a safe um software okay because most of the virus also most of the harmful software are also exit okay so that's why your computer must uh, uh, be careful about this okay so uh, it's just a verification now if you're being asked of the administrator uh, username password you must put it okay because most of the time students will not be allowed to install software on the computer of uh, uh, the university or the company. Okay, repairing a software is going again to the control panel. So when you are in the control panel, you can see here programs. Okay, you click on that. Okay, programs and features. You can uninstall and, and you can repair from there. Okay. So this is the list of the software. You click anything, you will have uninstall or change. Okay, and that means uninstall is removing the software totally from your computer. Change is modifying. Maybe it has a bad. Maybe uh, it's not running uh, correctly or it has some yeah errors. 
So you can modify, you can change PJH and modify the same. Uh, how to configure software, change the working environment within an application, change appearance of an arrangement of toolbars and menus, configure settings for default programs, behaviors, and so on. And let's say go, let's say Microsoft Word. Hey, go to file. Usually there is preferences. Uh, no. Options. Let's go for options. Yeah. Okay. So these are the different uh, things that you can do. Okay. Depending on you. So display, for example. Uh, how you can customize your ribbon, okay, what are the different things that will appear on the ribbon. So as you can see here, uh, these are just the different tabs, okay, main tabs, it's in here. Uh, you can change this, you can remove some of the tabs, you can add some of the tabs. So this is what it meant by the slide of changing the appearance, okay. Uh, you can also customize some toolbars, like that's for example, the quick access toolbar. All of these programs include a configurable quick access toolbar. So that's actually try to see that in, yeah, this is your toolbar. Okay, you can change this. Okay, customize quick access toolbar. Okay, you can click open. You can see here, there's no check on the open. That means the open is not here. Spelling is also not here. If I click this one, you can see that the spelling checker. Yes, already there. So I will remove that and so on, leave that there. Okay. Specifying program default. So as I said earlier, you can go to your settings of any of your Microsoft Office or any software. Okay, that's just an example. Uh, again, file and then more options. Okay, on the options, you can change anything here. Okay, not anything, I mean, whatever you can change, you go here. Let's proceed. Okay. Each operating system also can use an app store for distributing software. So, of course, you're familiar with your mobile phone. Android has its uh, Play Store and Google has an app store. Ah, sorry. <laughs> iOS or Apple or iPhone. Okay, have... Uh, I, I, Apple Store, right? Apple Store. Hmm. Let me just check. App Store. Okay, so Google or Android have Play Store. So, and also some of the operating systems on the desktop, they have also this App Store already. In Windows, they have. Uh, I'm just not using it. I'm not into it. Okay. Uh, finding an app in the App Store, of course, you can browse categories, you can refine what the space, search for a specific app. If you are in a mobile phone, as simple as opening the App Store, look for the applications or the app and then get, okay? So downloading and installing an app, click or tap on an app to open in its detail page, click the price or free to download it. Click the install button when it appears. How do we delete an app? So in uh, Windows applications, um, you can go to start all apps, then right click the app in the start menu. So you can hit, go, go here, you can see the different application, you right click and install. Okay, you can go directly. Okay, more. Okay, recovering a deleted app, sign into Windows Store, search for the deleted app, click its detail page, then click install to install it once again. So this is good for the Windows Store, uh, but most likely if you're, uh, you don't have to memorize this, you don't have to do it. Uh, so I think the question here is pretty uh, forward, okay, straightforward uh maybe steps okay on the steps of how to delete and recover a deleted app 
Okay, messaging application. Of course, you have the text messaging, okay, which is uh, basic for a mobile phone, any kind of mobile phone, smartphone or the old phones, okay. Uh, text, okay, is the uh, common name of SMS. Okay, we have MMS also, which is the multimedia, which has the picture or the audio to send messages and multimedia content over a cellular network. So SMS and MMS are uh, used by the messaging uh, application of your mobile phone, wherein you use it with the charges, okay, of your cellular network, okay? So to send a text message, you must have the cell phone number of the person you want to text. Okay, non-SMS messaging apps, you have, uh, you can buy, buy, bypass, meaning you don't need a cellular service, you need a, an internet then. So WhatsApp, Viber, Facebook Messenger, and then you can chat, okay? So, of course, you can chat through different messages, messenger, okay? So from different social networking sites also, and also some web-based email service. So if you use web-based email services, you can use, uh, for example, for chatting also, okay? Not only for sending email messages. Okay, like, like for example, Gmail chat. So Gmail chat takes place on Google Hangouts. Okay, the first time you want to chat with someone, you must send an invitation. Chat cannot proceed until the invitee accepts your invitation. So you go to Hangouts, you have Gmail chat, you know the email address, most likely you can leave the email address of your, uh, the Gmail address actually of the, the other person. Okay. Instant messaging or IM allows participants to converse in real time, allows for group conversations, useful for times when you need an answer right away, requires that you create an account. Of course, uh, messaging or instant messaging or using WhatsApp, okay, so that's all the same, okay? So maybe in, in, in older days there, we have only instant messaging, ah yeah. Okay, Yahoo, we, when it came here 2006, 2006, Yahoo, we have instant messaging, okay? And using different messaging applications like Skype, you can use Skype account or Microsoft account, even Zoom, there's a chat there, even what we're using uh, right now, the big blue button, okay? Okay, we add contacts, click contacts, point to add contact, then click search Skype directory to open the search. Okay, so it's simple also like this. So maybe you'll to get a question on how to do this, but of course the question is how to add contacts. So just go to contacts, point add contacts, and search for the Skype directory and key in the name and then that's it. Okay, exchanging instant messages with Skype. Type in the message area at the bottom of the Skype window. So this is an example. Click the send icon. You can send images, documents, files, videos, contact cards, and emoticons, and money. Uh, I think you're going to see this kind of questioning or example on the different uh, test, practice tests in GMSing. So if you're expecting this to come out of your exam, uh, expect it, okay? Now, lesson summary, that's it for uh, today for the lesson number five. So what we did was work or what we did was to describe the benefits of the software and install how uh, describe also or uh, yes uh, to discuss to you install and install repair and update apps and applications how to set software preferences work with windows apps and use messaging applications so with that we'll answer the question and answer again in our uh, universe uh, in our classes Okay, our virtual plans. But if I, in case we will have some uh, holidays later on, then I'll probably go into discuss those questions and answers once we meet, okay, in, in the class, okay? Thank you very much for 
uh, listening uh, will end this. Um, I will this list. I will end this lesson now. Thank you very much for watching and listening, and have a good day. Bye.